Welcome back. You're still watching Ways. Now, internet fraud is the use of internet services or software with internet access to defraud victims or otherwise take advantage of them. Internet crime scheme steals millions of dollars each year from victims and continue to plague the internet through various methods. Now, Dr. Blaze Ijebo is the Deputy Director Banking Supervision at the Central Bank of Nigeria. Before his current role, he was Head of Operational IT and Payment System Risk Management at the Central Bank of Nigeria. Now, remember, you can join this conversation, tweet at us, at Plus TV Africa or at Waysho Africa One with the hashtag Waze, or you send us an SMS or a WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. Now, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Blaze. Thank I you. love your name. Thank you. <laughs> it sounds very foreign. It's my biggest asset. Like NASA. Yeah, like NASA. Exactly. Oh, come on. Yes. Where are you from? Are you, are you Nigerian? Yeah, well, 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 February baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. All right, so... Um, well, we're November babies. Yeah, we are November babies. In fact, I'm November okay. 4th, she's 5th, so... You well, can okay. beat that. I've got two kids really. born in November, so I can belong to either. Oh, so... Oh, now you're living by myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's go to um, internet fraud. And any time the country Nigeria is mentioned, there are so many things that comes to mind, and one of the biggest things that comes to mind is fraud. Mm -hmm. We are so associated with fraud. And this, I believe, you know, has <laughs> left a, a very strong impression in the minds of international, the international world. Mm -hmm. So how do you think this image of us is affecting transactions, especially when, when it has to do with international transactions? Okay. Let me start by a funny story. Yeah. Okay. Many years ago, I think about eight years or 10 years ago, no, about 10 years ago, I was in Russia doing a presentation, and uh, it was a presentation on fraud. And uh, I got to this slide, and the next slide says, the Russians are here, and the Nigerians are coming. Yeah. And um, you can imagine, I'm a Nigerian, I'm teaching Russians, and I'm telling them they are fraud stars, and we are coming right behind them. It, it was one of my <laughs> most embarrassing moments in, in, teaching, um, yeah. in, fraud, in teaching fraud. But, but the thing to note is that, um, Nigeria has a reputation for fraud, but the data doesn't actually support that. The problem is this. The Nigerian fraudsters have become popular for a particular type of low-tech fraud, which is the scam, email scam. You send all those millions of scams. Yeah. It goes to so many people, and it's in your face. But the guys who really do the big scam, I won't go to the name names, but I will, I will direct you to, <laughs> to the websites, the, the top 20 countries in terms of internet f scams. Nigeria doesn't even feature. Wow. wow. So wow. Nigeria doesn't even feature in the top 20. Um, the only two countries that don't sit on that list is Australia and Japan. So uh, how come we have successfully owned that brand? Two, th two reasons, or three reasons. Yeah. Um, a Russian guy once said that the, where fraud thrive, where there is no fear of repercussion, hmm. okay? Um, and, and that's one of the problems. So the guys in Nigeria are able to flaunt their successes and the little money they make from their, uh, uh, from their scams, and therefore it begins to look big. And the fact that they're doing a low-tech one, it's spreading all over the place. Mm -hmm. The other issue is that because they've got a brand, other people are also riding on that brand. I don't know if you knew, I think about two years ago, um, a guy from the 67-year-old American was arrested for actually being the guy behind a Nigerian, Nigerian prince, prince yes. scam. Oh, I read it. And, and that's, that, and, and are there other people in, across Africa that are riding on that coattail? Yeah. Hmm. In fact, um, a few years ago, there was a study that the fastest growing segment or, or internet space from which Nigerian scam was coming from was actually Benin Republic. So wow. again, it's not Nigerian. So it's not necessarily Nigerian, mm. um, but but you know, put that aside and let's get back to the facts. How is it affecting Nigeria? It is affecting Nigeria significantly. Um, my, my job, I, I worked in the UK for a few years, and one of the jobs I did in the UK was actually doing um, money laundry analysis. And so every transaction that had Nigeria on it is flagged as a potential fraud, 
and I had to analyze it and decide whether it was a fraud or not. So that automatically delayed every transaction that the destination we'll was Nigeria. Nigeria. So, so that's just a, that's just showing a small it's bit perfect. of what the kind the of impact effect. is. And then you have a number of countries and a number of companies, especially the big international, that once you say you're from Nigeria, they will not do business with you. They will not even honor your LCs. They will not honor certain modes of payments. They will not honor yeah. cash payments. If you go to pay a ticket in the UK for a, for, 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 for a plane ticket, they will not honor a, Niger um, a card if you are going to Nigeria that is not in your name. Mm -hmm. So if, for instance, you couldn't pay for your daughter mm. to fly in the UK if you're using your card. Wow. The card has wow. to be in the daughter's, daughter's name. name. Or you have to come and fill all sorts of forms and go. So it does affect it stifles a lot, of a lot of transactions. And that's really Does painful, affect. isn't it? It is painful. Which brings me to the question that is the international community exaggerating fraud in Nigeria? Well, if you say, if you use the word exaggerate, I think they are extrapolating. Right? Um, okay. So there's a slight difference between exaggeration and extra exactly. extrapolating. Yeah. So, so what, what people are doing, they are looking at the quantum of attempts. All right, mm -hmm. and extrapolating that to mean therefore the quantum of success. It doesn't work that way mm -hmm. um, because the guys who really succeed in internet fraud, they take their time. They are very sophisticated. Um, um, I wouldn't want to use. Okay, let me use the example. Right. Uh, the biggest internet scam today that happened in the world is the intervention in the U.S. election. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Nothing, nothing bigger than that. Yeah, uh, yes, nothing yeah. bigger than that. And there's nothing, there's was, nothing Nigerian there. There's nothing Nigerian there. Nigeria yeah, yeah, yeah. so, 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 but if you see the number of um, emails that go out to people, and everybody looks at their emails, there is a stat that says one of every 30 emails that goes out, it's between 30 and 300, nobody really knows the exact number, is a, fraud, it's a fraudulent email. And that's a huge number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you think about the number of emails that people receive in our boxes out. every day. So, so that people extrapolate that and say, oh, okay, if, that, if so much is coming from Nigeria, therefore Nigeria must be the source. But, but if you really get down to the actual nitty gritty, impact, yeah. the nitty gritty, the yeah. actual data, Nigeria doesn't feature at the top yeah. of the cool. So, I mean, and you, and you mentioned that, you know, fraud thrives where there is no fear of repercussion. So yeah. this goes back to our government and um, us as a people, right? So this just basically means that even okay. though there are other countries mm. that probably do worse than they we would have done we worse, but because there were repercussions, exactly. Yeah. So oh. how how do we address this? You know, okay. what, what's government's role? Okay. I, I think we we, we um, and before I answer this, let me make this caveat. Yes. I, I don't speak on behalf of the central bank. Yeah. No, I'm here my personal capacity. Absolutely. Oh, okay. okay. So so um, typically fraud. Um, in, we, we, in risk management, we, we talk about the triangle of fraud. So okay. there is, there is um, incentive, mm -hmm. uh, there's rationalization, uh, and there is repercussion. So initially, the incentive is there where you don't have a job, you're looking for money to feed. So there is an incentive to commit fraud. Right. Um, if you look around and you see other people doing it and they're getting away with it, and they're being celebrated, you rationalize it that it's okay, mm -hmm. uh, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then if you don't get caught, or you'll see other people not getting caught, then it, it kind it of swells it. Right. It becomes acceptable. So what you need to do is to break that triangle at any right. point. So, and the government is doing quite a bit in that area. Okay. So I needed to say that to say that the fact that very often we say ah, government is not doing anything, yeah. but, but yeah. the government is doing something. Well, it's, 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 one of the one of the things, the good things, or two of the good things that they're doing is that with BVN, it's becoming a lot easier to identify who is a fraudster or who is the beneficiary of a fraudulent act. Right. So we can we can see an, a, a credit going to an account as a, the, the source is fraudulent. We know who is behind that account. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, it would be difficult to know who exactly was behind that account, mm -hmm. but that's gone now. BVN, BVN has addressed that. You see a lot of high-profile arrests. FBI, um, you know, if FBI arrests some in Nigerian, be sure that Nigerian um, law enforcement has been involved. Right. Yeah. So also, the FCC is doing a lot of arrests. So 
So it they're is, able to track so, 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 getting, so, right. Yeah, so it's getting better. And okay. those, that triangle has been broken at several points and, and it's getting better. Well, well, it would be nice to know how to measure this um, progress, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> every day, you know, it, it, it would be nice. They just fighting you every day. No. <laughs> let, let, let me put it this way. Yeah. Let me put it this way. You see, the problem is that you see the you see an issue, or you see how big it is. Mm -hmm. You need to compare it to other things, yeah. right? So, if you want to talk about cybercrime globally, 2017. The value was 1.5 trillion. Absolutely. Okay. Wow. 1.5 trillion. And you know what that is? If that was a country, it would be the 13 largest country in the world. All right. Nigeria wow. is 27. Hmm. Our GDP is about half a trillion. So it's three times what all of us, 200 million of us, make in a year. Hmm. They make it in one year. In one year. Three times. Through wow. cyber wow. fraud. Through cyber fraud. Wow. Wow. Okay, so yeah, if you children. if you if you take that pers in that perspective, yeah. and you look at how much a Nigerian fraudsters actually make, to that bucket. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how best do we now implement? So so, so yeah, what, what what we really should be saying is yes, we've got a problem. Yes, we started working on solving that problem, but it's also a growing problem. Definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, there is some statistics out that actually fraudsters invest about 40% of their profit in growing their business. Wow. All right? Like money laundering. Yeah. So, so <laughs> what they do is that they make $100,000. Mm -hmm. All right. They take about $40,000 to buy the next level of the business. Okay. Uh, and, and a lot of things that were difficult for Nigerian fraudsters to take on before is now becoming available to them. So as we are making progress on the law enforcement side, they are also making progress. Upgrading. On the, on the, on so upgrading how do we us. now upgrade the customer, so, the customer protection policies? Okay, all right. So, so yeah. CBN is doing a lot around that. Okay. So, um, um, I, I think, you know, I, I would, I, I'm not going to speak specifically on the CBN side, but from a public um, um, viewer, mm -hmm. um, CBN is doing a lot on that area. If, if you have any issues with your card, with your payment, or your account is before that, go to your bank. Yes, CBN has given very clear directive okay. on how banks should handle, handle. such fraud, fraudulent situations, yeah. mm. how they investigate it. They have a number of days. I don't want to quote the days because yeah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 I'm wrong. I'm right. <laughs> I'm not the official. Yeah, speaker. I'm not the official spokesperson. <laughs> okay. So let me not say the yeah. with that. But they have a number of days to address it. Okay. They they have to have a, a, an investigative test. They have to have a complaint test. Those are all required by the CBN for right. them to establish, mm -hmm. and all the banks have it. Right. So when you go, you complain, and if you are not satisfied, you can resort to the CBN. The okay. CBN has a consumer protection department, right. a whole department, well, that's that if you've got any issues and you're not satisfied with dealt properly, you can go there and you can have it resolved. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. <laughs> did you want to ask a question? Yeah, I did. I, I have questions concerning um, BVN. Okay. Because I remember when we were told to go register BVN and when internet banking and mobile banking was introduced, we were like, these are ways to cope. Um, fraud and all of that. However, we actually noticed that as we are upgrading, as the the banks or CBN, uh, you know, banks nationwide are, are upgrading, these guys are upgrading as well. So how does this internet banking, how, how does the fraud happen? What, what are the red flags oh, we should okay. look out for? And then the second question is this BVN, who verifies the information? Mm -hmm. That's fed we, into it to yeah. create it. Okay, so, so let me start from the last bit of your okay. question. So. The, the process for BVN, and again, you know, CBN people will answer a bit better, better but let me give you my perspective. Right. right. Um, the, the bank that your bank enrolls you and gives mm -hmm. you a BVN number, they are responsible for validating the data. Okay. okay. They already have your data. Mm -hmm. When you open an account with a bank, you have to validate your address by giving them proof of address. Some of them go and actually check your address well, out. Some don't. Some don't. Which is where so we're which is, which, is, yes. which, is, which is something that... The CBN is also working okay, to try and make sure that these okay. banks are doing what they should do. But the responsibility for validating lies, on the lies with the bank. Okay. And they put the data in there, right. and you put your bio data. Um, I don't know whether this is, this is right for me to tell you, but I think it's right. Um, essentially, if you put your data in one bank A, 
Right. That data is validated across, across the banking system. Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. okay. I think we right? know that. We yes. know that. So, 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 if you lie to, to Bank A, you just have a lie across board. You have to have a lie across board. <laughs> and any day you want to check that lie, it so becomes a problem. It becomes a problem. That's true. It becomes yeah. a problem. Wow. For I think you. you know what? We'll take a quick break. Yeah. We'll um, answer the second question. Okay. And we'll answer more questions <laughs> <laughs> right after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right Thank back. Thank you. <laughs>